Hi everyone and welcome to the St Patrick's Festival at the Marketplace Theatre. My name is Catherine Stafford and I have a little flower business called The Posy Barn based in Waringstown, also in County Armagh. I'm delighted to be here. I usually do wedding flowers, some silk flowers and I'm also a tutor in some floral classes here at the theatre, which I am very proud of. One of my claims to fame is that I was doing a class here one week. Peter Corey was also on the billing and my class was fully booked out and there were lots of seats still for Peter Corey. My other claim to fame involves Mike Tyson, the boxer and Atlantic City, but there's no time to go into that here. So we're doing a spring wreath class today. And this is something that I hope even if you're a beginner or you're very advanced, probably more advanced than I am, you can take something away from today. So I am here at my Irish cottage. Um, this is, I brought my door, took the, took the door off the hinges and brought it. And I have the finished result here. Now, as you can see, this is not a perfectly round, neat wreath because one of my mantras is that it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. In nature, you rarely find things that are very, very neat and growing in straight lines. So here is my wreath and it's full of lovely spring flowers, pussy willow, tulips, daffodils, and um, little ranunculus and some witch hazel. Now, a lot of these things are from my garden. A lot of things are from the hedges and some are from local supermarkets. So I don't want to hear anyone saying that you can't get things to make this wreath because you can. Even when I was coming through the beautiful landscape of Craig Avon on my way here this morning, I found lots of things you could make a wreath with. I'll go into all the details later. So that's a wee bit about me. Now, the first thing you need to know is the equipment to make your wreath. So this wreath is quite a large one because I wanted to show off a wee bit. So this is made on a simple oasis ring like this one. So it's got an oasis inside or floral foam and it has a hard plastic back with little studs foam to protect your surface. Now your wreath can either be for your door or you can have a wreath on your table. This is a little one with a candle inside for a table setting. This wreath would be very big on your table with a candle inside, unless of course you live in a castle. If you live in a castle, lovely to meet you, thank you for joining, but most people don't. So I am going to use, which would be, i uh, show you a standard 12 inch ring. They come from 10 inches, 12 inches, 14, 16. And you can buy these on online. A lot of florists will have them locally in where you live. You can pop in and say, can I buy a floral foam ring from you? The other thing you need is a pair of scissors. These are uh, my trusty Oasis um, floral scissors. It is worthwhile spending 10 pounds on a good pair of scissors. And there are other types as well, more like snippers, and they're good as well. They're about 10 pounds, they're not expensive. So you've got your ring, your floral ring. You've got your scissors to cut your foliage. You're going to need some string to make a loop for hanging on your wreath. And you're going to need, the bit of a tedious part is gathering all your foliage to use. Now, this is March, of course, and anything really that's evergreen at the moment, you can use. So what have I got in my bucket here? You need a good bucket full. Now, this is a very fancy bucket. This is not the one I went down the lane with yesterday. It was a big plastic bucket, a big black one that you would use for washing the car. But I, I don't wash, my husband washes the car, in it, but I don't. So anyway, here we are, and I have got bits of hedging. I have got bits of ivy. Now we are in Ireland, and if you can't find ivy, I can bring you and show you where to find ivy. It is growing up nearly every tree. I have got a wee bit of a hedge. As I say, if you don't have a hedge in your garden, someone else will have a hedge in theirs, is what I always say. So lots of hedging, bits from the garden, anything that's evergreen. Now there is no point in cutting this length of anything. You need to cut pieces about the length of your hand. I always say that's a good guide about the length of your hand. And you need a good bucket full. Now I don't mean a bucket full like you put a wee bit in and it piles up like that. I mean when you push it down you've still got a lot of room left. I also have bits of twigs because my driveway, with, we have been having lots of storms and my driveway had lots of these silver birch twigs and I just thought I'll use those. So you can see we have some twigs sticking out of this reef. We have pussy willows. These are local, locally grown pussy willows. I have some here. Isn't my display lovely? 
They kept changing it on me this morning. They wouldn't let me use all my blossom trees, but I've forgiven them for it. Um, locally grown pussy willows, and they're just, they just feel lovely. They just remind me of the nature table when you were at primary school. And uh, the good thing about locally grown pussy willows is, just a wee tip, you can cut them at a sharp angle and put them straight into the ground and they will hopefully grow. So that's a wee tip. And they're lovely, they're lovely, lovely and light and shiny. I've got some blossom here, some forsythia, some witch hazel from the garden, long ivy from the garden, and also a few wee things like daffodils, tulips, different colours of tulips, which you get very cheaply in supermarkets at the moment, little ranunculus, and wax flower, and some lovely flower from the hedge. And really, you don't need to spend a lot of money in this. This is the good thing about this. You need to buy your ring, which is about five pounds. Pair of scissors, well, you can use good, strong garden scissors, and a bucket, and that is really it, and a few flowers. And I think the whole thing could cost you about 10 pounds, which is cheap for a hobby. I mean, if you went to make a pair of curtains, Think of all the things you'd need and how much it would be. Even baking a cake, which I cannot do, it would cost a fortune. So, we've got everything we need. We've got our big bucket of foliage from the garden. Everything evergreen, okay? Anything evergreen at the moment will be fine. And it's all about the length of your hand. We've got some flowers that we've bought in the supermarket or we found in the hedgerows. We've got some pussy willow from the fields. Little daisies there were from the shop. Um, and we're ready to go. now. The next thing, my husband said, do this. I didn't think we needed to do this, but he said, I need to show you all how to soak your ring. So I'm sorry if you are a master florist and you don't need to know this, but Christine here, very kind. Now, now this isn't a nice bowl. I am sorry, I would have preferred a much nicer bowl than this, but this is the one I use at home. You need a bowl full of water and you've got your Oasis ring. This is my 12 inch ring, which is actually smaller than this one, but it's a good size and you just, Drop the ring into the water and just let it sit. And it will soak up the water. It'll take about three minutes. You will sometimes see bubbles forming and that means that the air is getting out of it. So you just let it soak there for a few, few minutes until it is really heavy, full of water. So I'm gonna have a wee look at it and see. I think that's nearly it. I'm gonna put it back in again. And it's amazing how heavy it does get with the water. So there's my ring now. It's got dark green and it's heavy. So I'll just put my beautiful bowl away. So that is your ring soaked and you've got your bucket of foliage, everything ready. The next thing you need to do, this is really important, is you're going to make a loop to hang your wreath with because if you wait till the end, till it's like this, you're having to fight through all the different foliages to put your string on and you end up squashing everything and getting very cross, so it's not worth it. So here we are, and I'm going to do a little loop. I have doubled over my string to make it strong, okay? And I am just gonna tie it around my wreath ring. The wreath is such a useful thing to learn how to do. Now I'm tying it in a knot because it's, it's suitable all year round. This is a spring wreath, so it's mostly sort of lovely, delicate flowers in it. But you could do a lovely summer wreath. There we are in a knot. So that'll hang up quite securely. It will dig into the oasis a wee bit, but that is fine. So here's what I'm going to show you now how to green up your wreath, which is the next stage, which you're using all your foliage. And once you get to the stage where it's all greened up, you can basically use that wreath summer, autumn, winter, especially Christmas. We had a lovely Christmas class and an autumn class here at the theatre recently and with great crack. We always have tea and coffee and buns at the classes, so if you're thinking of coming, please do. And Paul, my husband, sometimes sings. Now, I suggested to Paul that since this is going to be sort of, you know, a lot of people are staying with me, maybe I could sing, and he just went... So that was the end of that. So here we are with our ring already with our string on. Now, in best Jenny Bristow, Delia Smith, Blue Peter fashion, here is one I started earlier. Now, as you can see, this is bigger. So this is a 12 inch ring and this is a 14 inch ring. So I started off graining it for you because you really don't want to sit there for half an hour. You know, Desperate Housewives is on probably at the other side. So I'm going to let you get away. So here we are with our ring and we have our string on. It's soaked, so it's 
really quite heavy and I have started to put the foliage on. Now you can see there's quite a mix of things. I had some eucalyptus here. You can get it usually from flower vans in a local town. I have some of things from a mother, mother's garden, camellia of hedging. I have a bit of pussy willow, ivy. Ivy is brilliant, honestly. You could use, put all ivy in this and by the time you add your flowers and your twigs and things, it's absolutely fine. So different things from the garden and the laneways in that. I think it's a very Irish thing, isn't it? To go down the lane and gather up your foliage with your bucket and get the kids to do it because children can get involved in this very easily. So, the only thing I didn't get was catkins, you lamb's tails. Now, there were loads of them at the roundabout in Portadown and in Craig Avon, but I didn't stop because they were quite high up and my knees aren't what they once were. So, we didn't do that. So, here we are with my bit of foliage. Now, I'm going to use this to do the outside edge and then the inside edge. Outside edge is going to be longer than the inside edge because if you put long bits in the middle you won't have your hole and it won't be a wreath shape. We won't have our eternal hope of spring in front of us. So I'm going to use longer bits from the outside and I'm going to try and angle them down this way. I'm going to put one in to let you see. Before you do anything I cut this foliage about two days ago so the ends have dried up a little bit so I'm going to give it a fresh snip so that the water can get in and it'll last. This will last for, oh gosh, a month. The flowers mightn't, but you can take them out and replace them. Now, I am going to angle this piece of foliage down because I don't want to be able to see the back plastic back when it's hanging on my door or sitting on your table. Because if this is gonna be sitting on your table, you're gonna be at eye level and you don't want to see any of the plastic. So I'm just gonna continue on. There's my mummy's hedge. My mother hates ivy and she says, I don't know why you like that ivy so much, I hate it. And she keeps snipping it out of the garden and I say, mummy, leave it, I will use it. Now there's a bit of long bit, nice long traily bit of something we're going to put it in. So I'm going to do the outside and then I'm going to do the insides as well. So longer bits on the outside, you see the way that's hanging down and I'm going to do a little, little short bits, if you've any wee short bits are great. There's even a wee bit of cut in half. It will do anything at all and I'm just going to put it in. The ones in the middle can face up the way but the ones at the back down. So as I say there was no Jamie Dornan here today. I was a bit dis disappointed because I'm sure he's been here at some stage. You know I've written to him several times and had no response. It's very disappointing but in a way I suppose it's for the best because I'm many things but you know I'm not a home wrecker. So, we'll leave him be. And I'm sure he's been over Northern Ireland lots of times and he still hasn't called to see me. Anyway, little short bit. It's got a fresh snip. I am pointing it in. And I'm going to keep continue doing this. Now, do you see my door there? Wouldn't you think my husband, with lockdown for the past year or so, would have maybe had time to give that door a lick of paint? Short bits. I mean, look at it. And the wind will be whistling in where I've taken it off this morning. Little short bits. I'm just going to do all of the inside. So I'm sorry if you are a master wreath maker and uh, you're sitting and you're thinking, oh, I know how to do that. But, you know, you always do pick up a wee thing. Now, another little short bit. Well, that's a bit of a longer bit. Put him in. There we go. This is a little lavender wreath I had at home and I thought I'll bring that and let everyone see how they can... Um, now there's my inside done, so I'm just going to finish the outside. How they can use it for their table. Because people that use Christ at Christmas time, all you need to do is you get to the stage where this is all covered and just, just cover up any, any bits. If you do the sides first, I find it's very easy to do the middle. So you just, just keep them going so that I have all the greenery at the outside and the inside. And then you can start the fun bit, which is add your flowers. There we are. Nearly you can see the wreath shape happening now. And you can see why I didn't want to start from the scratch in this, because you'd be here for... Oh, I think you could do one of these. If you had everything cut, you could have it all done in, I would say, half an hour. I think it took me about half an hour to do that one yesterday and it was raining and it wasn't very nice. 
So the other thing this wreath will be really useful for very soon is Easter because Easter's only around the corner. I mean, who would be without the bunny ears? So Easter's here very soon. I love those bunny ears and I never get a chance to wear them. So we can add to our wreath over here some little accessories which are available in all shops at the moment. We could put in some little sparkly eggs if you want, tuck them in. And if you wanted to, you could add a big pink bow. Now you can add some yellow foliage in as well. So you could, this is some raffia, which is a bit wrangly tangly, but you can easily make a big bow out of your raffia, tie it together and add it in for Easter. Uh, I have used sort of yellow flowers. We had, a, I started doing uh, flowering really for our little country church. And uh, so I've got the outsides done and I'm doing, I'm just gonna fill in the middle bit now because it's very easy to do. The other thing when you're doing a wreath is, it's nice to have a bit of height and a bit of bushiness with the, with the wreath. Uh, when, I, when doing classes here, I do find sometimes that you get ladies and everything is very neat, very neat and tidy. And other people, it's out to here. So we're talking about the hand's length, really, all the way around. When I first started making these when Pussy was a kitten, I used to do big long bits here, big sh little short bits there and short bits here and it was just like a big flat plate. So you are sort of going for a lush roundness. So yes, I was telling you about the church. And this lady in church, everybody took their turn doing Easter, you know, Easter arrangements and that was grand. I'm just filling in the middle now so I'll just chat away while I'm doing this. Um, bit of ivy, lovely. And she decided that Easter, what colour? Yellow. So that was grand. So I came into church on Easter Sunday and there was this lovely big vase full of yellow holly beside the front of the church. Yellow holly. So I think, you know, yellow holly, I don't think that's something you maybe should use. Yellow holly for doing this at Christmas time, perfectly lovely. And fir. If you have a Christmas, a real Christmas tree, snip a few wee branches off it and tuck them in around this. But you can basically use this same foliage all year round. So there we are and it's nearly greened up. Now, if you want to check the roundness of your wreath, okay, uh, and you always know the top of your wreath because that's where the string is. But I tell ladies in the classes, if you want to know the shape of your wreath, because it's hard to tell when it's on the table, the only real way to check is putting it down on the ground and looking at now I can see this wreath here I have got a bit of a empty space here the lady said to me how can you see that and I said well I've been looking at these for a very long time so I'm going to put another bit in there you're better getting this the way you like it before you add your flowers and it's just much much easier so there we are I'm trying to hide I'm not fine, I'm not stuffing it full of foliage. No, I'm not having it cram, cram, crammed full because you have to leave room for your flowers to go in. But I am trying to cover so there are no obvious green bits of a waste. So sometimes you can just tangle your way through. So I'm gonna have another few more bits in here and then I'm gonna start adding some flowers in. So as you can see, I have quite a bit left in my bucket. Maybe, maybe Cahill the cameraman or Christy would like to bring it home and try and make one of their own. One never knows. There's a bit of work going on here at the Marketplace Theatre. I think they are making fancier dressing rooms with champagne strawberries and Jamie Dornan in them. Um, so now we are basically ready to add our flowers. So as you can see how that would work all year round, can't you? The only difference is what I'm going to add now. In fact, I might put some twigs in first. Have a bit of fun with it, have a bit of fun. Now my twigs, I'm thinking what direction do I want my twigs to go in? Well, you don't want it so, so wide that you can't open your door if it's going on your door. So I'm just gonna put one in there. And then even when you hang it on your door, you know, you can adjust it then. So these are just, these are actually curly branches. A man posted on our community, our local Facebook page, that he was cutting down a big tree in his garden and it was curly willow. And he said, if any flower rangers out there would like some curly willow, please come and get it. So there I was out in my van like a rat up a drain, drain pipe. And I went and got a load of it and it's in my garden. And I actually used some at a wedding last week. Oh, I did a wedding on Saturday. Oh my goodness, it snowed and snowed and snowed. It was a complete nightmare. The poor girl, uh, four inches of snow on Saturday morning. And there she was, but she was beautiful. And didn't she get the day she wanted? 
well, you know, three quarters of the day she wanted. So what I have I got now? I've got some, oh, I wish you could smell these. Broom, Janista. And I have, this is out of my garden, this one. This is witch hazel, a yellow witch hazel. And it, it's really the only one of the only things that's flowering at the moment, and it's lovely. So I'm gonna pop some of it in. And I like it because it's nice and tall and it's a bit wild. I'm gonna leave it quite long. So, and the other thing it's nice to do when you're putting the flowers in is to group things. I find things have more of an impact when you group them rather than, you know, one thing here and one thing there. You could probably see in this, I have grouped three ranunculates together. I have a group of pussy willow together. I have the tulips. And um, I just think, yeah, if something's really nice, you want to show it off. So I'm gonna pop, poke it, poke it in. Now, you're noticing I'm cutting everything. Even if it's been in a vase, I am giving it a fresh snip with my scissors and at an angle. If you cut things at an angle, there's a greater surface area for things to take up water. So here I am, now. Where's, where's the top? I'm looking for the top of Marie, there's my string, because I want this to hang down the way that is. I don't want to cut that short, I want it to be nice and random. So I'm gonna push, it, push the things in well. You'll know when you feel that that's not gonna fall out on you. And then I'm gonna cut, cut this lovely bit of broom here, and then I'm gonna get, that's gonna give me two bits. Just cut away the lower stems so that they've got a good area to push in. And I'm gonna make him something like that. I'm gonna make him point up that way because it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And nature doesn't grow in straight lines. I'm sure somebody's gonna message, I know something that grows in straight lines. Well, you know, okay. So there's my Janista in. I'm putting the bigger things in first and then we'll do all the smaller things. Pussy Willow, as I said, you can get this to grow in your garden. And you know, it's lovely. See against the blue sky, on a spring day, this is really stunning. So I'm going to put some pussy willow in. I'm leaving it long as well. Remember, you can make things shorter, but you can't make them longer. So cut them a wee bit longer than you think you're going to need. And then you can always cut them shorter. I always tell everybody that. So I'm going to put him like that. And then I think I'm going to put some down that way as well. So I hope you're all behaving yourselves this St. Patrick's week. I am gonna go in here to through my lovely Irish door and my husband's gonna have a big pot of Irish stew on the stove. And hopefully he's find out something to block up the big hole where we can sew, because I have my door here. So there we are on our pussy willows, our blossom. If there was blossom on my cherry trees, I would have loved to have brought that today, but unfortunately not. Of course you can cheat. Now I have been known to cheat and you can get some things like artificial blossom, but to me it's a bit too pink. But what we have here is artificial um, forsythia. So it's very natural looking. I didn't have any growing in the garden. So that is actually silk forsythia. So I'm gonna pop that in as well. So who's gonna know? You know something, you're only pleasing yourself, aren't you? I mean, you're, and, and the thing is, when we can have visitors again, you can have this on your door and they'll be coming and think, oh, never mind your door, look at your lovely wreath. Isn't it? Where did you get that from? And you can say, oh, listen, I just threw that together. <laughs> it is, it's great. So now it's time to add some flowers. And we're gonna have, oh, they smell, they smell lovely. They smell lovely. They, I wish you could smell these. We've got tulips and daffodils and we've got our blossom already in. Oh, there's some lovely purple tulips. And again, I got these two days ago in a supermarket. The interesting thing about tulips is they keep growing after they're cut. So you might find you put tulips in a, in a vase and suddenly they're out this size. What else am I gonna put in? Over here, I've got a nice little jug. Isn't a jug a pretty thing to have? It's so easy to do. If you're doing a jug at home, start off, put some foliage in from the garden and that'll give you a basis on which to add your flowers. So you just tuck your flowers in amongst your foliage. I'm going to use some ranunculus. Now these are really pretty, lovely pretty spring flower. And I've got my tulips and my daffodils. So I'm just going to get all out here. I've got some little daisies. I've got a hyacinth. Oh, the smell is lovely. Some hyacinth. So these are nice pretty spring colours. These are sort of the colours I think of. Now there is an iris that hasn't opened yet, but I'm hoping when he's in here he might open up. 
and some little wax flour, which is quite a delicate, quite, you get that maybe from the flour vans or sometimes the bigger supermarkets might have it. And it's nice to have a range of sizes of flour. So you sort of got the bigger size daffodils and tulips and then the little tiny daisies and the wax flower. And I'm going to start and put these in. Something similar to the way they're done here. So we'll have the ranunculus in a group. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do with the ranunculus is I'm going to cut it at a very sharp angle. Now you find with a lot of these spring flowers, they have very bendy, delicate, squishy stems. And there's a little tip for putting them in. So here we are. And I'm mindful that this is the top of my wreath and I'm going to have it maybe in like, have, just have a work around where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put this one in there. So if you get your scissors and you make a little hole with your scissors first, it will be much easier to put your flower in rather than you stabbing away and squishing the ends because the ends are so delicate that they will squish very easily. So I'm going to put this one up here. So again, just, or even your scissors doubled over is fine. I'm going to put a little hole, just a little hole to give me somewhere to put it in. There we are, that's him. And there's a really nice pop of colour there. And I think I'm going to use another ran ranunculus because they really are nice. And you can only get them this time of year. Some, I remember had a bride who was getting married in September and she just loved ranunculus. And I had to say, no, I'm sorry, you know, it's just a spring flower. It's not available. Spring, late winter. So there's our ranunculus in. Next, I'm going to put in, I think I'll put the bigger things in and then there's a lovely daffodil. I did have little tiny ones from my own garden, but there were only two. So I sacrificed them. I sacrificed them for the greater good for the Marketplace Theatre. Again, the daffodil stem is quite delicate. So I'm going to make a hole first and then pop him in. There we are. Again, these are so cheap to replace. They won't last an awful long time, but your greenery will. The greenery in your wreath will. And I'm going to put another daffodil over here. Again, if you want to be very even and have your daffodils all well spaced out within your wreath, you go ahead. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so there's our daffodils in and our ranunculus. Now, tulips. I'm going to put a nice yellow tulip in. I think I'll put one over here. The other way you can do this is actually when you want to put your flowers in is uh, hang your wreath on the door where it's going to be once you've got it greened up like this and then you can see exactly where you're putting them in or have it facing round the right way which is easier but this is a bit like hairdressers you know the way they have to sort of stand and look in the mirror and they're doing everything the wrong way around. It would be much easier if they were if you were looking at them face to face. My daughter did my hair this morning, bless her heart, she took a day off work to do my hair and I'm very grateful because I'm a makeup, because believe me, I was like the wreck of the Hesperus when I got up first thing this morning, so Amy, thank you for taking the day off and doing it for me. There we are. So again, just adding the flowers and it just brightens up the whole thing. I'm going to add a few more tulips and then I am going to put some little delicate wax flower and um, daisies it. So I, I'm imagining that tomorrow morning you're all going to be rushing around the countryside, uh, gathering everything up. Of course, forest parks are also a great place to get things, but forest parks used to be you went to the forest park with a dog and there was no one else there. And now you're going to the forest park and it's like Christmas Eve and pre-mark and you're sort of, excuse me, excuse me, so, uh, you know, just any laneway, any, go to the roundabout between Portadown and Armagh. There's loads, and you take my finger off, they're always watch what you're doing. Um, go to the roundabout or Craig Avon, the beautiful, beautiful city of Craig Avon, and you will get lots of foliage there. Anywhere where there's old trees or an old wall. I used to get all my foliage from, for ivy and things from Guildford. There's an old wall in Guildford, County Down. And they went and they cut all the ivy off the wall. I thought I had a lifetime supply of ivy and it was all gone, all gone. So let me see. Okay, so it's very green up at the top still. So I'm going to add some little delicate things up at the top, I think. So wax flower, this is a lovely wee, use it a lot in buttonholes. It lasts a long time and it's nice and delicate. So again, 
just fills in between the gaps of your larger flowers. These little daisies are just the cutest thing. Their proper name is Tanacetum. Tanacetum. I just call them little daisies. Fever few, I think it is. And you'll find this growing wild in the Irish countryside as well. So I'm just popping some daisies in. And is that all my daisies? Have I used all my daisies? Oh, gosh, I must have. I'll put in some more wax flower. Oh, there's another little thing called limonium. Limonium, it's nice too. I'll pop it in. And again, we're just filling in any little gaps. And you might need at this stage to put your wreath on the door or on the ground to see if it's still a nice shape, whatever shape you want it to be. I have to say, in some of my classes, I've had to tell the ladies maybe to cut it down a wee bit shorter. You know, sometimes it's a wee bit long. Because sometimes they raise the sides of them, they wouldn't get them out through the door. So, you see now? Yes? We're basically getting there. You see, I've got some curly willow in there as well. And then to finish it off, I would just be adding a few more of those delicate flowers. Oh, there's my iris. I didn't put him in. I hope he's going to open up. Let me see. I'll tuck him in there. He'd be nice up near the top, wouldn't he? There we go. Anything else I want to add to it? Let me see. There's a little, a freesia. Oh, I forgot about the freesias. Freesias are very locally available as well, and they haven't opened up yet. I'm going to put a couple of them in. Again, everything about the length of your hand. And it doesn't really matter what direction things point in. Some people, when they're doing a wreath, they like things to be sort of going around like a Catherine wheel in that shape, but I like it all a wee bit random. Now, it's not exactly finished. I would have to spend a wee bit more time on that, I think, but it gives you the good idea. Now, for Easter time, let me see. I'm going to bend over the wires. These are little eggs and things that you get in uh, any of the cheaper shops. I'm not going to mention names. I'm not allowed to. I was hoping to mention some big names. And then when I got home tomorrow morning, there'd be a whole load of free stuff at my front door, but I wasn't allowed to do that. But you know who I mean. Let me see. There's a funny little thing there. I'll pop it in. And again, you can have these wee bits in for Easter and then you can take them out again because this will last a long time. I do a Christmas wreath every year for my uh, sister-in-law and she keeps it up until Easter. Now you know how late Easter can be sometimes, but she keeps it up until Easter. So coming up to Easter, or maybe you just would like to add a ribbon to your wreath. There's lots of ribbons available that you can use. This is wired ribbon, which I always find gives you a good shape, anything with a wire. You could also use some raffia lots of raffia into a bow or there's some velvet ribbon if you want to be very fancy there's lots of lovely velvet ribbons or easter ribbons with bunnies and chicks and things on them again get them wired and this is about a two inch three inch wide ribbon because if anything smaller you can't really see it so this is our ribbon and it's about i would say one and a half meters long maybe i've cut and i have going to leave a little of a tail because you want to be a bit of a tail hanging down like this and I'm making a loop and then another loop. And can you see the way that the wire keeps the bow in a nice shape? And then you do a very technical term, which is called squishing. Remember that, squishing. So we're squish the ends together quite tightly, and then you're going to get a wire. Now, you mightn't have anything you can use at home. If you go into any florist and say, can I have quite a strong wire to do a bow with? And they'll probably give you a few, okay? So we always give the ladies in the classes uh, lots of wires. So a wire. Place the wire along the back so the bow is in the middle and I'm just going to very tightly pull that round a couple of times and twist. Now this technique is the same you use for wiring cones, Christmas ribbon, even baubles and I'm going to fold up the end and that gives us more purchase to add in to our wreath. So there we are, you can play about with it because of the wire, you can even squish the ends if you want it to look a bit more natural. I think I'll put it in this one here, that's up in the door. So to, to, to welcome my guests for their Irish stew and potato bread and I'm just going to tuck it in and I'm going to push. So you're bending the wire and you're making it stay and then you can fiddle with your bow and place it whatever way you like. And again, another great tip for anything at all is to stand and count to three. If you are looking at anything you've bought, a picture, uh, curtains, 
anything at all, you stand away from it with your back to it, and then you count to three. One, oh, one, two, three, turn round. Oh, I don't like it. And then you can fix it. Just gives you that wee bit of distance. That's better now. I don't want to hide. I don't want to hide that flower. Okay, so there is our Easter wreath. So all I have left to say to you is a very happy St. Patrick's week and a happy Easter. And I brought it so I'm using it again. You're never dressed without a hat.